Hi, hello, good morning all, and um, thank you for being here. We still have some people trying to get into, but uh, yeah, I believe that uh, we can start. Uh, we are going to talk about lending. Uh, and indeed, if we just come like um, a few years ago, we think about lending and it was like a person going to the bank office and uh, asking for a loan. So now when we think about lending, we see that everything is digital, instant, every time that you are doing a checkout, you are offered this. And this is indeed one of the payment trends that we need to consider and this that is impacting our payments, our online checkouts. So when we see the growth and talking specifically about uh, Europe, uh, buy now pay later is growing at 15%. And uh, being UK, one of the uh, most successful markets where the adoption is higher. But um, we still have challenges, and this is what uh, we are going to discuss uh, also today. So we, we, to, we talk about like uh, some of these segments. We talk about uh, young people, or we talk about uh, freelancers. The access to this credit is getting complicated, and they believe, uh, based on some studies that we have done, that this is due to the low credit scoring and to the complicated processes. So let's start from here. So what's lending today? And in order to discuss this, I have like here three experts of the market. So let me quickly introduce them. So we have Notelia, eh, Noelia Morgade, that is COO at ID Finance. Carlos Perez, head of new business at Aplazame, that is part of uh, WeThink. And Niels Berg, that is VP Sales at Segura. So thank you, all of you, for coming here. So then let's start with the, this question. What is lending for you? How are your companies providing the service? OK, I think I'm, I will start with this, and I will give the, the word after. Uh -huh. So basically, I think that lending is just a service. So basically, I know it's not as sexy as crypto, that the, <laughs> the chat that we had before. But at the end of the day, we need to provide lending because it's always people that need some finances for maybe, I don't know, go on holidays or for the day-to-day -day expenses. So basically, that's why company like my company, Plazo, or their company, are, we are here. So basically, the way that we have done it is basically we have kind of changed the scope and the approach that we do to lending. And we have literally an application, a mobile application that you download. You can get a card. You can do a top up, like you do with other applications. But what we have added into that is a credit line. So basically, if you need to have some credit for your daily expenses, for your shopping, for whatever you want to buy, literally in 15 minutes, you get this, this credit line. Why? Because I think the innovation in lending is the speed and is to do, as you said before, 100% digital. So basically, we used to go to the bank with papers, waiting. They will review the papers, and it could be like a week, two weeks until you can get a loan. Now. We don't have a printer at home. So basically, if they ask you to bring a paper, you don't know how to do it. It's actually a challenge. So the fact that you literally, in 15 minutes, as I said, you download, for example, the plateau that we have in, in ID Finance, you download the app, you put your data, we have your credit score because it's 100% digital, and then you have your credit line in there, and you can go and do shopping. I think that's something that it's kind of needed in the market, and it's also brilliant for the end of you know, the customer at the end of, the, of the, the other side because basically they don't want to wait. We don't want to wait in general for anything and we don't want to wait for lending either. So I think the speed yeah. that other companies like probably Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, brought to the shopping, now we have it in the, in the lending. And I think that's how we understand lending and how it's lending for us. I don't know if you think the same, you have. Okay, yeah. let me just. Uh, thanks everybody for being here and thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm working for a Plaza May and for Lenrock that are do, two different fintechs that are devoted to more or less the same business. A Plaza May is a point of sale financing. Uh, we cannot hear you, I think. I believe that we have some. T okay. Gracias. Thank you. Hola. Better? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so. Uh, I'm the head of two different lines, lines of business. One is Aplazame, that is a point of sale financing, and the other is Lenrock, that is point of sale financing, fa but specialized in auto. As Noelia was saying, uh, this covers a very basic need of customers. 
when you want to purchase a good or a service, maybe you don't have the cash in order to pay it at the moment. Then you need a loan. This is the type of solution that we offer to the customers. Uh, the customer wants to pay for a, I don't know, a TV or for a car, and with a digital process, we can, we are able to approve the loan in a few seconds with no papers, ID, and maybe some questions depending on the type of loan, and the, uh, the loan is approved and the customer can take the, lo the, the good car or the other type of good. And we pay to the partner, that is the seller, in the next day. So it's very convenient, it's very fast, and covers a basic need of the customers. Not all the customers have uh, the cash in order to pay for the good. So I think that we are covering, we are offering a service that is of high value added to the customers. So uh, in many occasions, uh, people think that lending is bad, that lending is uh, not responsible, but I think that is not the case. And we are going to discuss this in the next question about respons responsible lending because I think that is really, really important. Yes? Thank you. Yeah, also thank, thanks uh, for MasterCard to being here on the panel. Uh, very happy. Actually, six years ago, I was here with a startup and we tried to raise some money and we actually succeeded thanks to Tal Summit. So <laughs> it's a great location and it's uh, great to be back here. And uh, now I've been two years with Secura. Secura started out 10 years ago. Um, our founder is um, from Scandinavia. Uh, he has been like me, like 20 years here in Spain now. And when he came here, he said, actually, um, in Scandinavia, in Germany, where I'm from, it was very typical to pay by invoice because it was old catalog sales. So you have the catalog at home, like pre-internet. No, there was a time that internet didn't exist. 80s, 90s of last century. Um, so you looked at products there, you ordered them in, you got them home. Uh, you tried them and then you sent them back or you kept them and then you paid like on 30 days. So typical invoice payment. So that was very established in uh, Scandinavia and Northern and Central Europe. And then when the internet started, it was the same way. And this actually helped quite a lot in the early days to boost like the e-commerce system and ecosystem in those markets. So when he came here he and thought, well, there's not a lot of trust here in Southern Europe, well, in Spain specifically. People don't trust websites so much. No, there's not so much e-commerce. So he said, I'm going to start with an invoice payment. No, I'm going to allow everyone to pay, uh, to, to buy, separate purchase from payment, allow everything, everyone to buy, and then they get the product home and then they pay. And he told that to people here in the market, and everyone said, you're crazy, you're nuts. This might work in Sweden, but it doesn't work in Spain. No one will pay you. No? You'll be out of business within four weeks. So he started out, and here we are, 10 years later. We have 330 people now on a run rate of 90 million in revenue. So it seems it has worked. No? So invoice payment is something we still do. And since then, um, we've kind of evolved into more financial products or flexible payments. We're not seeing ourselves so much as a lending company or as a lending entity but much more as a flexible payment company because what we do is we offer, very similar to my um, co-speakers here, very um, flexible solution at the moment where a certain person, a user, a shopper, a student, uh, might need uh, an extra bit of help in order to do something they want to do. Washing machine broke down. Yeah, you can wash by hand, but that's not great. No? So you might need a washing machine, a new one, and you might not have the money. It's 24th of the month, and it's a bit difficult. No? You need some education course. No, you want to um, apply for a course. It might be expensive, but it's important for your future. Now, it's not easy to, um, to pay everything out of the money you have available every month. And also like Carlos, no, responsible lending is very important for us as well. And it's very easy to say, hey, should we lend money? Is lending bad? But I mean, what about someone who has a car and he needs the car to get his kids to school and their car breaks down, doesn't have the money to repair it? Should we say, hey, we don't lend you money? Bring your kids to school like on the, school, on the bus or walk or take a taxi every day and pay for that? So actually, I think there's lots of responsibility there and lots of good things that come out from flexible payments that we will probably talk about in the next questions. Yeah. 
Yeah, I believe that this is a concern that we have in the society, and this is why responsible lending is becoming a, another trending topic uh, right now, because we need to ensure that the customers are not getting a debt that they, they cannot afford. So what's your view on this, or how you are approaching this in your companies? And maybe, Carlos, you can start this one. Let me just introduce what responsible lending is from my point of view, because you have first, you have to meet the regulation. This is the fourth question that I think that we are not going to cover, but of course we have to meet regulation. But on top of regulation, you have to adhere, you have to follow good practices. If you lend money to someone that is over leveraged, this is bad business for you, for the society, for your customer, for everybody. So you have to meet some basic standards. The first one is that you don't have to lend money to someone that cannot pay, not because he cannot return the money. Maybe even you can say that statistically you are going to make money from the customers that are going to pay, but you shouldn't do it because you are uh, facing a problem in the future for that particular customer. Second, you have to sell pr uh, lending products that are transparent, that are easily understandable for the customers. And in general, the customers don't have a high finance culture. Maybe uh, it seems very easy but if you are entering in a revolving agreement, in a credit line, uh, in a long-term loan, the customer doesn't understand fully what he is signing. He, the, the only thing that he understands is that he wants to buy something. The third one is that your price policy has to be, um, let's say, ethical. I think that there are certain levels that we shouldn't overcome. Not because there is a regulation, because I think that it is not fair. So, if you are covering over leverage, if you are covering uh, ethical prices, and if you are transparent with your customers, I think that more or less that uh, is the more important angles from a responsible lending perspective. Should I go? <laughs> so, obviously, I agree with everything that you have said. So, everything that he said, I said too. <laughs> Um, our approach as well to this basically is actually based on risk scoring that I'm going to skip it because it's not super appealing. But basically, <laughs> at the end of the day, you can do everything online. So you give a risk scoring to the customer. Obviously, you look for your company because you want the customer to repay you because we are all here to make business and this is what it is. But also, I think it's really important because also we want customers that are going to be able to repay us and it's not going to be a hassle. What we have done in Plazo, um, to actually help and provide a little bit more of like wellness within uh, our application, it's give cashback. So basically, every time that the customer is using our application to use our car, uh, you get cashback back. And you get cashback in a lot of places. If you go to the supermarket, if you buy a pair of sneakers, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, at the end of the day, it's like we're giving discounts constantly when the customer is shopping. So download the app because they are actually really good. Um, and you can use them on your day-to-day -day basis. And I think that's what it's important. So basically, to be always you know, the voice of your customer and be helpful for them on, obviously, situations that maybe there could be a little bit more complicated. But also what we want with lending is like be their day-to-day -day kind of uh, way to pay and get it something a little bit more like uh, natural and not see it as a, you know, a moment in time that I have like a specific problem that obviously we're in there and we're there to help them all. But also like yeah. if you want to use it on your day-to-day, -day, why not? Because like obviously, for example, like in our application, you get discounts. So it's something good for you. And I think that that's the important thing as well that our products are evolving and um, to help the customer on their day-to-day -day basis as probably you do as well, Nils. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, couldn't agree more with what has been said before. I think most important thing really is transparency. No? And especially in, in, a, in a world where lending is not like this act of going to a bank and sitting down with your bank director for half an hour or an hour or so. Um, nowadays, obviously, many of these operations like embedded finance, no, they are at a certain point of sales in physical stores, online or wherever have you. There's also like a tendency you know, that we see in the market that, especially younger people, but in general, there's a tendency that you're not getting into long-term financial agreements. I mean, if you buy a house, you do, but in general, you try not to, but you rather do look for finance or look for something 
at a certain moment of time when something, ha something happens, when you need something. No? And so in this moment in time, which might be on a website, it might be um, for a mobile phone, it might be for a new pair of jeans or whatever, you might be in a situation where you think, oh, I actually need some flexibility. So what's most important there is transparency. There's no small print or whatsoever. It's very, clearly very clear communication of what actually this means. Is there an interest I need to pay on top of the price I'm paying? Is there not? If there's not, that's possible because maybe the merchant, the website where I'm purchasing in is assuming that fee. But it's very, very important to have this very, very clearly uh, put. And then what's very important is there, like with regulation that we touched upon a bit, um, there's something like uh, accessibility. No? And for the financial industry, it's uh, very important uh, and there's an obligation that you actually attend a customer once he's contacting you. And there's a, um, a, lay, a law that actually says you need to respond to a customer within a certain amount of time. No? And this is very important because money is an important issue. No? So if you have an operation, a transaction, you want to speak to someone quickly. And so we, for example, we, like our head of customer care just the other day said, hey, in preparation for this law where we need to respond in, I don't know, 15 minutes or something on a phone call or 10 minutes or 7 minutes, I, I can't remember, our average was 12 seconds. So if someone has an issue, because there might be an issue, you wanted to pay but you can't, for whatever reason something came up, you can speak to us in no time at all. And I think this is very, very important because this is responsibility. And adding to what you said as well, we don't have any interest in not being responsible lender, because flexible payment is the only thing we do. And if we lend in a non-responsible way, someone won't be able to pay, and we will have an issue, because we will be out of business if they stop paying us. So it's, I think it's, there's an intrinsic incentive to actually lend in a very responsible way. OK, before ending, because we don't have a lot of time, I would like to ask you the latest question, because it was in the subject of this uh, session, the future of lending. So we have talked about the uh, new technologies, everything online, open banking, open APIs. So how do you see the future of lending? And uh, please <laughs> be super short. <laughs> um, super short. I think um, the users will decide what they want, what they need in order to satisfy the needs, and the markets will go in that direction. We see lots of verticalization. We offer specific solutions to different verticals just because the needs are different, the needs for the user and the needs for our merchants we work with. And I think that will exactly continue to be like this over the next couple of years. Lending has existed for something like 600 years, maybe, uh, from, the, from the Italian bankers, for instance. It's going to continue existing. We are going to adapt to the new technologies, to the new processes, to the digital, to the artificial intelligence, generative and artificial intelligence, that I have to say it, and that's all. Yeah, I agree with Niels. I think that the future is going to be what the customer is going to tell us that the future is, and basically what we need to do is be on top of that, and whatever the needs are in there, like the companies needed to fulfill them, otherwise we'll be out of business, I think. Uh, yeah, the future is the customer. So whatever they want, will be there. No, I believe it's a good sentence to close <laughs> this session today. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Noelia, Carlos, and Nils.